Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week. And a look forward at what might happen in coming weeks. And hopefully... Lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout this show. Well, the stock market rally broadened early during the week as new highs came on improving breath and a huge rebound of depressed Chinese stocks. After an early surge, also helped by the full approval by the FDA of the Pfizer vaccine, investors went into wait-and-see mode as the Jackson Hole virtual summit was coming Thursday and Friday. The investor ebulence was disrupted after news came Thursday of the horrible terrorist attack in Afghanistan in which 13 U.S. troops, nearly 100 Afghans, uh, were murdered and 180 or more people injured in that incredibly horrible, vicious attack. But buyers returned Friday morning awaiting Powell's Jackson Hole summit speech. Uh, and during that time, in the background, uh, uh, six different Fed heads were out talking. Uh, Bullard, uh, George, Mester, Bostic, Harker, and Kaplan, who's a non-voting member, and all setting the tone for a much faster tapering of QE coming, and even starting as early as October, and talking about it ending quickly. It's a plot, of course, to soften the blow of the expected withdrawal symptoms from the Fed taper when it begins. And that's what happens when you get off of a narcotic, of course. And the Fed are the pushers. Uh, and the Delta variant, which of course is raging sadly around the country, is keeping them on the street corners. So uh, while uh, Paul is out uh, and the rest of the team talking about the tapering change, um, and that coming on pretty soon, that might not mean a lot for a lot of their policy. Uh, and while this preparation for investors is going on, Powell then joins that course in line with the rest of the team. And he does say, as all of them have been saying, as they team up to send the same message, substantial further progress that they were looking for has been made. Um, the the speech that Paul gave, he did a, a good job in separating the taper, in other words, the reduction of the amount of QE, uh, how many securities that they will be buying, and separating that from actual interest rates and uh, also there any reduction in the balance sheet. He is pretty clear in saying that the balance sheet will be maintained uh, and uh, that uh, remembering, he didn't say this, but I'm remembering, uh, what happened in 2018 when Yellen at the same time raised rates and uh, set the taper in place, the stock market got hit very hard. 20% came pretty quickly on the downside. So he wants to make sure nothing like that uh, happens. Uh, he does say that uh, uh, he can't really 100% count on inflation being temporary. And on the other side of that, he gives reasons why inflation, there are signs of it, that it's already waning. And he says that, that they will support the economy as long as needed. So that very, very positive message that came out pushed the stock market to another all-time high. That's after that dip that came on Thursday on the news of that terrorist attack. It's amazing, you know, I'm listening to all the analysts out there uh, on uh, the different business stations or uh, reading their comments and uh, how they say that QE, of course, all that stimulus was bullish for the stock market. 
and the tapering is bullish for the stock market. So somehow you've got to figure there's something wrong in that discussion. It's really a very bubbly mentality. And when they say that uh, stocks plainly won't fall, I mean, there's hardly anybody out there looking for anything other than just a minor pullback. And for now, I'm joining that camp. Uh, in this uh, show, in this spot in the show, many times I've illustrated uh, factors that show the extreme overvaluation in the stock market. And uh, right now, the, um, the Buffett indicator is at about 205% of GDP, which nobody could have ever guessed that the stock market valuations will get to that level. But nothing reflects the insanity of the current environment in the NFT market and how that's associated with cryptos. It's all over social media. I can't believe what I'm seeing. All those young people bragging how many nonsensical digital pictures that they have accumulated and how many ether uh, they have spent because that's where the cryptocurrency, that market is how the, how the NFTs uh, operate. Uh, in, in, their, in that world, in that world of uh, NFTs and cryptocurrencies, there is a devastating implosion ahead. So over coming months and into 2022, I think there's a major tone change coming. And uh, we look for a significant valuation reset in crypto and in NFT and SPACs and in the stock market. However, later in this show, I'm going to give you a good idea of why I think the bull market still has life. Yes, we are looking for a correction, but everything that we see indicates that uh, this upward rise is going to continue into coming months. And I think you'll find that fascinating because I'm going to bring you some analysis in a chart that I haven't shown before. For the week, the stock market moving up uh, and a lot of that happening here on Friday, S&P 500, NASDAQ, Dow Jones Industrial Average up between one and a quarter and two percent. The Russell, however, now that is a very significant chart. It's up about four and a half percent, five percent on the week now as it continues to move up here at midday when we're doing this video. And there are very significant signs on our work that the correction in the Russell and the small caps is over. And when I look at the breath figures today in the stock market, they're almost five to one on the, on the plus side. So uh, breath is expanding and that correction, that very big narrow range sideways correction that we've seen in the Russell in the small caps really looks over. So that's going to be part of my changing analysis uh, when I get towards to the, uh, the end of the show. Bond market, 30 years down about three points. Uh, so you can see it's a risk-on environment. And the 10 years, uh, they're up about seven basis points and a slightly steepening yield curve going on during the week, which, of course, is good for the bank stocks. Gold up $27. Now it's still moving up here, more like about 28 or 9 as I'm speaking. Silver up over a dollar on the week, so we have money moving in there. And we have liked what we see in the silver pattern, and we've been talking about uh, a rally coming in silver uh, versus gold, and certainly the percentage gains this week. Uh, in silver, we're stronger than in gold. Uh, in this risk-off environment, a uh, risk-on environment, sorry, the dollar uh, loses about eight tenths of a percent on the week. Uh, we think temporarily it's made a peak, but higher prices probably coming in the dollar down the road. Oil soared, incredible, six dollars and eighty cents on the week. Uh, we looked. Uh, uh, if you watch Future Speak, which is our very deep analysis on now 26 different futures contracts and stock indexes and ETFs. Um, we talked about the correction on the downside being over in the products. That's gasoline, heating oil. And that was setting up a potential bottom also in oil, though we think oil is going to have some kind of a pullback in here. The oil market has been also very strong. Four out of five good updates here this week. Uh, and oil, uh, even though it may pull back and get some kind of a test, that low really looks like it's in place also. Um, uh, coming up in this show, uh, we're going to give you a preview of RV's great work in the semiconductors. Uh, so we'll show you a couple of those stocks. 
uh, in our uh, stock sectors video for members. So you'll get a look at a couple of those. And I'm going to give you analysis on the SPY and the VIX for the short term. And I think you're going to find that to be quite interesting. So that's uh, the opening of this show. I want you to remember, please go to AskSlim.com and explore our website. Uh, please do subscribe. You could subscribe for free or you could become a, a level one member at a discount I'm going to show you right now. You'll really get a good feel. Uh, and share and follow the things that we post uh, on social media here. Um, if you're new to Ask Slim, uh, I would say that you can really learn a ton uh, in just those two uh, memberships about what we do. Uh, go to YouTube. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do subscribe to our channel. Uh, click the notification bell and like this video. Give us a thumbs up because uh, that does help us. And uh, on Twitter, follow us at AskSlim.com. For information on our memberships and specials, please write to Matt at AskSlim.com and he can uh, help you with our uh, offerings that we have uh, on uh, all of our membership levels. Talk about specials right now. Uh, I just want to let you know about our level one special that we're running right now. This is really a great way to get a handle on the things that we present. Uh, you are going to get a tremendous amount for your minimal investment here. A Slimulator Momentum Tracker, which has over a thousand symbols. It is all of our proprietary momentum indicators. It gives you a directional bias. This is for longer term holders, uh, position traders, investors. Uh, you find it phenomenally informative. Our Stock Index Report Weekly with technical analysis and the major indexes and all of our charts. Our Spider ETF Review with technical analysis and the major sectors. Uh, you'll get our new trader workbench where you can order, organize and prioritize and save and track your analysis. Uh, the Market Week Archive, uh, which you can review our analysis and, and uh, the style of analysis that we uh, show. And uh, the, our Aslim Live replays. Now there is a replay we put in there this week that you must see. We had three people get coached. I did a webinar on uh, a very important aspect of what gets in our way personally uh, to be successful as we engage in the markets. This is just unbelievable. This one was a little bit longer. It's about 90 minutes and you're going to get blown away by what we present. So you're going to need to be a level one member to be able to see that and you'll get all of our special member videos. The price for this well, it's normally $19.95 a month, which is just amazing anyway. But for first time people come on board, 30 bucks for three months. That's just 10 bucks a month for all of this. Please do sign up for level one. You'll really get a great handle and you'll be able to watch that video of our live event from this last week that uh, it will blow you away. It's just fantastic. I thought it was great. We've gotten many, many emails regarding that uh, event and I think you're going to find it spectacular. 30 bucks for three months. Please do sign up right now. All right, we're going to show you a little preview in here. Uh, RV is our analytical, uh, our cycle analysis expert uh, and uh, brings great things. Uh, every other week we bring you a preview of our, our work on international markets or some stock sector uh, this week. Uh, he did bring um, two stocks that I think you're going to find very interesting. One of them not looking so good and one of them looking pretty good. So uh, you're going to see that. And I think overall, uh, uh, because the semiconductor group is kind of mixed, I think that the individual analysis on these stocks is really helpful. So uh, please do uh, become a level two, three or four member to watch this entire video. Take a peek now from RV. So this is Taiwan Semi, and what we have here is the SMH cycle in green, as we do for all these charts, and we have the stocks cycle in black. So what we see here is really a more bearish pattern. You can see that the sector cycle is actually out of phase relative to that of um, Taiwan Semi. But what's going on here is we have already had a test of this key low, and we're now getting a bounce off of the 
semiconductor index low, right? So you can see that. So what we're looking at is for this rally to actually fail and then roll back down into the Taiwan semi low, which only comes out uh, due around 11.8. Uh, to 1227. So we're really looking at this as a bear flag that will likely set up and then get one more rollover back on the downside. So this is actually a bearish pattern here in Taiwan Semi, and we are looking for a move overall down to this intermediate 61.8, which comes in at around 101, and that's with Taiwan Semi trading 117. Now, let's say Taiwan Semi were to get back over this intermediate 61.8 which comes in at 129, then the overall shape would change. We would look for a move like this and then a higher low to form and then a move back up. So it'll be very key to watch how this name acts around this zone from uh, 121 up to uh, 129. We would really be looking for a failure in that zone and then a rotation back to the downside. So this is Marvell, and for uh, Marvell, we have a dominant weekly cycle, which is also broken up into the minor half cycles. And I just want to briefly outline these cycles so you can see them clearly. So if we go back to uh, August of uh, last year, we had two cycles pushing up with the dominant cycle pushing up as well as the minor. You can see the rally here. Then we had a pullback right here to form the minor cycle low, then the rally off the minor cycle low, then the pullback right here in the... Uh, March time frame and you can see the bottom that formed if we look forward we had two cycles pushing up once more had a nice rally had a pullback right here uh, very clearly to form that minor cycle low and then the rally off the minor cycle low and then here had a very mild pullback to form that dominant cycle low as well as the minor cycle low and after that we are now in a bullish mode once more with two cycles pushing up with the dominant pushing up as well as the minor What's going on here is that we are still looking for higher prices here. We have an intermediate term uh, 61.8 FIB at 65.79. And if it were to get through that level, our next zone up is this um, intermediate term FIB target zone from 69 up to 73. So that's really what we're looking at in uh, Marvell, a really positive name here and a very clear relative strength name here in this group. Great work, Arvi. Um, if you want to learn more about cycle analysis, you can just go to our workshop page there and there's some information I think you will find very valuable in a little video. So uh, that gives you some sense around what cycle analysis looks like and uh, really good work on Taiwan Semiconductor and Marvell. So thanks for that. All right, we're going to uh, switch over now and look at something that you're all been waiting for. I know that, and that is, here is my analysis for the short term on the stock market. I'm going to show you a chart that is a bit different than any I have illustrated before, in that it has both short term and intermediate term analysis on it. We have been talking about a stock market correction that we originally thought was going to come into August and then based on the patterns it was suggestive of coming into September so we're getting close to that period now where we think that the the that decline will be coming however we are upgrading it again and I will show you that so this is SPY and in a moment I'm going to show you the VIX and see and show you how implied volatilities align with this so what we're looking at is cycle analysis. And again, you can learn about cycle analysis by going to our site, asslim.com. And there's a video uh, that you can watch uh, regarding our cycle analysis workshop. Just go to that workshop tab and watch the video. I think you'll find it very interesting. So what we're looking at here are cycle brackets on the bottom. And they show you the average cycle period. In this case, each cycle is averaging around 20 days. This last one right over here was 23 days, so it gets a little bit longer uh, at some times, and there is always a variance in here. These vertical lines show you the exact low, and you can see that sometimes it's not exactly on where the ideal low would come. This one pretty close, not bad over there, and then there is this projection that you see right over there. You can see that the last several cycles have been trading up 
this upward track, essentially, this channel. This is a directional component, and it influences these cycles right over here. These are the ideal, but when you have an upward force, it then puts them in configurations that are positive, as you can see. In addition to that, if you understand the slim ribbon right over here, that shows you momentum conditions have been positive. And during the little corrections that we've had, it's only gone to neutral at times. So you can see the slim ribbon PO, that uh, then tells you it's neutral. And when you get into long periods of green and just blue, little blue corrections, you're in a very positive condition. The upward arrows show you the resumptions of the, uh, uh, of the um, momentum condition. Uh, and when it's negative, it will be uh, a downward arrow and these will be red. But we've been very positive during this whole period. This yellow zone right over here coincides with this bigger cycle coming down where there's an expectation of a correction. We have upgraded that correction based on several things. Uh, the most important thing is the shortness of time right in here uh, as the intermediate and the daily patterns only really show about two, three weeks maybe a little bit more of corrective period in here. So we've upgraded that to the um, intermediate 23.6, which is at 431, or the intermediate 38.2, which is at 419. We were at 5.3 to 7.7%. Now it's 4.2 to 6.7%. That's where these levels are right over here. It's not a very big correction. Now I want you to see these corrective periods because I want you to understand. This one right over here, we have a note. Let me just go back so you can see that blue note. This cycle is in sync with the intermediate corrections in Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon. So we're expecting pullbacks in the mega caps to actually help with that declining phase right in there. Now, if you look over here, you can see where the last times that the dominant cycle came coming off the weekly gave you a correction. This was at 5.8% on the downside, and this one was at 10% right over there. So you have the intermediate patterns off the weekly overlaid on here, and that's this one right over here coming up. So you can see how the intermediate and short-term patterns work together. There are actually, since the uh, significant low, which is way back over here uh, from the pandemic period, there have been basically a long repeat of very positive cyclical patterns. As a matter of fact, there is uh, eight out of the last nine have all been configured very positively with just that one right over here, which was kind of a flat cycle coming in the dominant correction right over there. So it's been extremely positive. Momentum has been extremely positive, And you'll see that in the Slim Ribbon PO. So the expectation, again, over the next several weeks is that it will likely try to get higher. Now the resistance levels right over here are 452 to 457. These are FIB confluences that come off of the short term and the intermediate term right there. And then there's a minor 618 there uh, at 452. So 452 to 457 is the resistance zone. It got up to about 450 here today. Uh, so there isn't really all that much room and we expect that it will begin to give us sign of faltering and then get into this corrective period, which comes out into week two to week three of September, which is where our intermediate projection moved out to a number of weeks ago. So this is in alignment with that. You can see right in here all of those uh, beautiful corrective periods and how they line up and all of the fantastic cyclical patterns in here that uh, in momentum wise have remained extremely bullish and configuration have remained con extremely bullish. Higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, and higher highs, positive momentum. And all of that we believe will be interrupted briefly for a decline in here. And when that's over with, this intermediate correction is done for, and then we get into these next rising phases. And I made a point that the Russell has made an important bottom already. And that really says that some months out here after this correction, the bull market will be continuing. So uh, uh, we just read it the way we see it, and we see a correction coming. We see it not lasting long, not being anywhere near as deep as we expected, and then the bull market resuming on the upside. Now, here's that corrective period we're looking at. I want to look at the VIX, V-I-X, for you to see. 
and uh, this is the, uh, the these are the VIX cyclical patterns in here and right now we're at a period where this market stock market is moving up but the VIX is in a period where it is likely to rise again and we talked about the short-term pattern in the stock market uh, potentially declining into week two or week three in September and we see implied volatilities potentially coming up in here and then of course they will begin to come down again so uh, something like what we had right over here where it chops around all of a sudden we get a big spike it doesn't last for a long period of time and it's over with so we're going to look for somewere between 26 and 30 in the VIX coming out over here into September and that does align with what we're looking for uh, in the uh, spider SPY uh, for that corrective period as we come back over here to see this alignment of this correction is in alignment with the increase in implied volatilities which we think now will be quite brief and then the market be the stock market be in much uh, better shape going forward the, I got to tell you the breadth expansion and the small cap action says to me that uh, there's a potential for October and November being very good for the small cap index so that's the period we're looking for for the stock market to make its highs of this bull market uh, and that's way different than our uh, January 1st analysis uh, we just follow what the stock market tells us, and then I bring that to you. I hope this has been great information for you, uh, and that wraps up our Market Week show for today. Make sure that you go to the Ask Slim website, explore it. If you're new, become a free member or uh, join that great special we showed for Level 1. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, and watch some of our other member videos there in the playlist. On Twitter, follow us at Ask Slim. And if you have questions about our analysis, uh, uh, about our membership, about uh, anything about our huge offerings, please do write to Matt at AskSlim.com, and he will be able to help you easily with that. I want you to be so careful. It is so crazy out there. We're always wishing you great trading. Well,